I'm Meredith Blackwell, and I'm here with a crew from North Carolina State and two other mycologists who are Van Cotter and Mark Cubetta, and we are here on the grand occasion to interview Mel Fuller. And Mel was a mycologist that I looked up to for many years, and he was the person who did beautiful microscopy, and I can remember his presidential address for the Mycological Society. Do you remember it? Very well. <laughs> and he stood on a stage. I don't think there was a podium or anything. And he showed pictures behind him. And it was perfectly timed. Do you remember that? Who did that for you? There was a film of Kittred Swing. I made that with a graduate student. Oh, and it was gorgeous. I had stopped smoking the year before. And he smoked every time we sat down to work on these pictures of all these fun movies, really. Mm -hmm. And I was smoking again, but I got rid of it right after that, and that it was, was 1976. It was, it was quite pre-digital. But anyway, it was the most beautiful presidential address I ever saw. Thank you. Now, I wanted to ask you, I read in a biography you've done for your children, autobiography, I should call it, you have uh, told about your days of working in a shop where you stole all the coupons from the cigarette packs. I did. Okay. I don't know what they were about or what they were for, but I, I, I thought they were worth something. So every time I, well, not only did I open up one cotton, I opened up all of them and took the coupons mm -hmm. out because yeah. we were selling them by the package to the students. Okay. To, okay, so let's start back a little bit earlier. And yeah. why don't you tell me a little bit about where you were born and where you grew up and some early experiences. Well, I'm, I'm a maniac. I grew up in <laughs> Livermore Falls, Maine. I was born in the house that I grew up in. Uh, I probably started out being pretty stubborn even in early days. It, uh, I was one of the things you did in Maine in those days was you had baked beans every night, every Saturday night for supper, and I refused to eat them on Saturdays. So my father would send me to bed, and I'd stay there until my mother at the next day brought me some lunch or something. But, but no baked beans on one I night. Would, I'd eat them any other night, but I refused to eat them Saturday because that's when everybody else was eating them. Okay. Okay. So then uh, your parents, uh, what did they do? My father was a was a plumber. My mm -hmm. mother, with five children, was was at oh home in the early days. She, we had a garden. We had we raised a couple of pigs and cows and some awful chickens that flew every time I had to go in there. And did you have to slaughter the animals? I didn't have to, but we had a slaughterhouse and the mm -hmm. things went there because we always had bacon and yeah. everything in the winter, and then the, a large garden plowed in those days with horses, <laughs> but uh, Interesting. it was, my mother was, we also, my father built a greenhouse for us, so she raised a lot of flowers and, and so on, but mm -hmm. the, uh, Yeah, he, so, so I'm assuming your parents didn't go to college. I was the first they? one in the whole family who ever graduated from college. I think both, all the families of my mother and father, but uh, I, I later had a brother, two brothers, and... Uh, mm -hmm. But you were first. The, yeah, that's interesting to me because uh, that struck me as, as something that was very different from other, from what I would have thought when I interviewed, I guess we interviewed 33 mycologists yeah. before you. And it turns out that uh, many of them, like John Taylor, his parents had never been yeah. to college, Lynn Boddy. A number of very prominent mycologists, so it's interesting. Well, the thing you did in Livermore Falls when you graduated from high school is went to work in the paper mill. And, and again, I said, I'm not going to do this. My father said I couldn't afford to go to college, so I got three degrees and an honorary degree to put him in his place. So, and the, did he live to see that? I'm not sure it made any difference to him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so tell me about your uh, high school days and how you got to grad school eventually. 
Well, in high, high school, I, I was in the pre-college program, and uh, I think probably the, the most useful course I took in high school was typing, since I could always type, touch typing and, and made things go faster. But uh, I mean, it was, it was a fabulous high school, and I had a good, great science teachers and so mm -hmm. on. And, and uh, a lot of my spare time, I uh, was the, I never played sports, but the coach insisted that I had to come and manage the ba baseball team and the football team and all these things. And uh, so anyway, that's how I first got the name Mel instead of Buddy, which I was <laughs> glad to get rid of. Can't anyway. imagine. So then, then my father told me I couldn't go to college and I said, I'm going. I went, uh, worked in the bookstore where I and, and the, the guy coupons. that I stole the coupons from, the head of the bookstore, asked me if I had done this, and I said yes. And he said, well, then I'm going to make you manager of the <laughs> store you worked in last year. But, and I then went on to manage a bigger one. And, and that's really how I paid for college. It, I was mm -hmm. lucky. And where was that? That was the University of Maine. And then I went to the University of Nebraska for graduate school. Mm -hmm. And that's... I actually worked on a fungus called Neurospora, which a lot of people have heard of. But yeah, I think so. That was the so. first and last time I worked on it. So. I think people have won Nobel Prizes based yeah. on Neurospora. Well, you don't get them for chytrids, although maybe somebody <laughs> will for the one on frogs. The frog chytrid, yeah. But if they give them in physiology and medicine, it's not likely. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so eventually then, well, who'd you work with at, at Nebraska? That's what colleges? happens when you're 88. Okay. I, I, I don't remember his name. He was terrific. Mm -hmm. he, he, really was, he was a student from Cornell who had worked with the famous mycologist there. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess I think he, he really synced the idea that I wanted to be a mycologist. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but I didn't want to work on the fungi he'd worked on. I, okay. I, I had a love from way back in, at the University of Maine when I was sent out in the middle of the Stillwater River to get some ice and see if there were any fungi in it, and I got water mold, so. In the winter, in the In ice. the winter, even, so the, there was boars there somewhere. So you, you melted the ice, is that what? I melted the ice and baited it with hemp uh -huh. seed. And so they must have been frozen. They were, they the were either molds. frozen or had enough something that they yeah. could handle a fro freeze. Didn't know about that. So then you went to? I went to the University of Nebraska from there and, yeah. and, and worked, on, work, worked on trimethylacine production in, in Neurospora, Neurospora, which was, I don't know why I was, I was growing it and it smelled like crazy with this stuff. And there was an article about some woman working in Italy and the wallpaper paste apparently oh, yeah. was infected and, and this fungus was involved. Yeah, is that the one that produces arsenic and people it, get poisoned? It, 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 trimethylacine, it, it, it was eating or using as a source of carbon probably, the yeah. uh, arsenic and wallpaper paste, and as a result, uh, that uh, made trimethylacine, and that's what was poisoning people. Yeah, I think they thought for a long time Claire Booth loose. Yeah, that's who it was. But, I, I couldn't remember. But then I, I think they found it was something else, actually. Really? Uh, but but well, people are known to have That's been what they thought it was when I did it, and that's why yeah. I, it really was, that's why I went on to study the production mm -hmm. of it. And, yeah, and, I think uh, it did work. And then somehow you got to Berkeley. Well, that was, that's interesting, too. It, I mean, I got to Berkeley because... When I finished the master's degree, I was going to go to plant pathology work, to work with a physiologist who was and very good. The summer before, I worked for another person in plant pathology, and then the department head told me that I had to do my degree with him. I couldn't work with the person I went there. And again, that maniac uh, yeah. came to life, and, and I went to the University of Michigan to the beatings and met Emerson that I admired very much and had read lots mm -hmm. of his papers and so on and, and uh, said, I'm not happy. And he said, well, I have a job. And so I went there to take care of his culture collection. For huh. And that 
culture collection still going? I don't, is it really? Yeah. Well, you've been there much more than I well, have recently. I, John was hired, John Taylor was hired to, yeah, I know that. to yeah. curate the collection, and I know that people still get material there. That's, well, that's good because a lot of the stuff that's in the National Type Culture Collection is not there anymore. Yeah, no. It's, which is, it, I mean, that's one of my real sorrows is that, but I'm glad to... Yeah, the ATCC collections. Yeah. Now, kind John of is down. retired now, too, so... Yeah, but he's still working. I think he has yeah. grant money well, he's for got a couple more years. Uh, yeah. yeah, two couple of years he tells me, but I don't mm -hmm. believe it. <laughs> we'll see. He's never there. <laughs> So, okay, so you got your degree working on chytrid. On, on, no, or it wasn't a chytrid. It was Rhizidiomyces, which is a hyphochytrid, and uh -huh. which is now, I guess it's put with the... With the algae. With the algae, uh, which is where the, the two-spored fungi go, like Phytophthora and so on, but I still call them fungi. They're, yeah, they're, you and uh, Bartniki Garcia. Does he still call him fungi? Oh, yeah, he yeah, Well, he worked up. on it, of yeah. course. It, uh, He's the one who showed that all this stuff was, was wrong. He's the one who gave us the characters, the, the carbohydrate walls and materials. Well, Rhizidomyces has chitin in it, so yeah. it, it, and if, I don't know if you've been reading the New York Times about the fungi in the Antarctic, but yes. uh, that's... The very uh, early one, the fifth... One of the things the billion that year puts them a billion years yeah. earlier than they thought or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think people were saying a billion years for fungi, but now we can extend it further back because surely they didn't find the first fossil fungus. Yeah, yeah so you're keeping up. Barely. New York Times? My, New I York have a Times. good friend who was also on the faculty at Georgia who's here, who was head of biochemistry there. And, and um, who is that? Uh, he worked with Wood. David Poet. Porter? Poet. Poet. No, David oh, no, Porter's up in not, Maine. He that's was, what I thought. He went back to Maine and yeah. stayed, unlike yeah. you. Yeah, I was thinking of the uh, Scandinavian man who was at Georgia, who worked with wood decay. Yeah. But yeah. that's not David Porter. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay, I know who you mean. Yeah. Yeah, he's not living anymore. He's a good oh. friend of ours. Oh, he was a nice Don't ask guy. me his name. Yeah, it started with an L. Anyway, okay, so let's go on to Berkeley. I made a list. Uh, there's a really great uh, history of the first hundred years of botany at Berkeley. So Great. what that makes us wonder is there going to be a second hundred years? Well, the same person won't write it. No, no. <laughs> so Emerson was there when you were there, and I, w I was concerned about who some of these other people worked with. Uh, what other mycologists were there? Because there are people that weren't working on things that I thought uh, uh, well, uh, Emerson would have. Lee Bona was was okay was. There and he was a basidium mycete person, but he was. I don't think he had any students. I, yeah, I, I, I don't have any students. The, uh, well, there was one lady in the herbarium who worked with him. I think Isabel. But, uh, Isabel Tavares. Tavares yes. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't. Not very many students, but a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, yeah, because um, Bob Gilbertson and I a few years back maybe 30 years back, started doing a genealogy of mycologists, academic genealogy. And I don't think we have Boner with any students. I'll have yeah. to check again. I should have done that. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Howard Whistler arrived back in Berkeley sometime in March. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he was portrayed to me by Emerson as an absolute genius. And in later life, I think he was an actual genius, <laughs> genius and what he did with Coelomyces and other fungi and so on. But he was coming back from Air Force service in Italy. Oh, and, that's and, what uh, it was. Uh, this guy was going to be a genius, and we were all going to have to wake up and get with it and so were on. Were you and, jealous? And, and uh, <laughs> it turned out that Howard, of course, became one of my best friends, and uh, I eventually wrote his obituary, unfortunately. Yeah, Too I, early. I remember I edited it, and one of the things I wanted you to have in there was about how you had appointed him as chair of an MSA committee. But is, he, is it actually bigger now than, is it almost the size of that page? Yeah, huh? Um, well, you see, you... Well, you, now it's online. It's, well, we I, you know, one online. of the things that I object to about the Mycological Society is the fact that you are a centennial fellow in the British Mycological Society because you and I went, That's made, right. made it the same year. 
And I can get the journal, I get all this sort of stuff, but the Mycological right. Society of America, even though I was a distinguished one and all this president, doesn't, doesn't make that thing available to you. And it's, I it's, know. It, I'd like, well, I'd, I probably couldn't understand most of it, but I'd like to see it. Well, let me tell you what. You're going to tell I them. can give you my password and let you get on the journal, but what might be better is if you could speak to the upcoming president of the society, Mark Cubetta, who's here. We'll let you talk to him later. And he might be able to do well, something good. about well, it. I just think that, 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 mm. that former presidents and, and people that, I, I don't know what kind of an honor I got, but something distinguished, distinguished mycologist. mycologist. Right. That, uh, well, let me tell you something. When, when I became secretary of MSA, I had a huge collection of the newsletters. Uh, Dr. Alexopoulos, my advisor, had started the newsletter. He did that as secretary. He, he did all kinds of things. And so one of the things that he did was keep up with this, uh, with the dues, and, and he, because it was secretary treasurer in those days. So he, um, he had this newsletter, and I read through all of them so I could be a good secretary. And one of the things I read was that people who had been uh, president of the society were supposed to have a lifetime membership after that in free journals. Well, that's so, what the British gave us. Mm -hmm. for, I know. For, and, uh, yeah, that was a fun meeting. And I, I went to the online copy because I didn't yeah. want, but they would have given me the, initially they were sending me the paper I know. edition. And I told them I wanted the online and then I didn't bother to get the passwords set up because I was using them through LSU. But guess what? All the British Mycological Society journals are done by Elsevier. And LSU and a number of universities in the United States are cutting yeah. out all their journals. They're just too expensive. Take up too much space. Yeah. So, so let's go back to your career. I remember that your first job was at Brown. Yes. Ivy League. You were in the Ivy League. And that was a good place for you because you'd been in a fraternity, right? Well, and I had a wife from Rhode Island. Oh, okay. And, and, okay. But she and, was no, happy. Actually, Brown was a, was a wonderful university. Mm -hmm. and, and the only problem it had for me was that it had three people in the plant biology. Oh. And, uh, Too few. Now, Wally Snell was there. I don't know if you've ever heard the of Wally Snell. The baseball player. Uh, well, Wally Snell was one of the great bully mycologists mm -hmm. also. And but you uh, know that he was, he a, was baseball a baseball player, player for, yes, the, yeah. um, for the uh, St. Louis. Somebody, I, I don't remember that. St. Louis, that, but, I think. But anyway, he was, he was retired. In fact, I was replacing uh -huh. him, which was impossible. But anyway, anyway it was, it, if Brown had had more people in the plant sciences, I would have probably stayed there because yeah. I loved the place. And, and I, that's where I have an honorary degree because you, you couldn't have tenure at Brown without a degree from Brown University. That is very strange. Okay, so um, you got then, you got to Brown and I read that you had a Damon Runyon grant. When I arrived, which was unheard of. What in the world was Damon Runyon doing, giving out money? <laughs> he was well, he was gone by then. I, I, Damon, well, it was the, I foundation. think it was even the Cancer Foundation or something. It was. Oh. But I, I don't know, and I don't know. I don't even remember what fungus I got it for. I think it was probably kite something about chitin because I had done. Mm. Ralph Emerson, had, when I was a student at Berkeley, had set me up with a person in agronomy who was doing uh, x-ray diffraction, and, and oh, yeah. that's how we proved that there was chitin in this fungus. As that, well as uh, cellulose. As well as cellulose. Yeah. Yeah, well, I thought it was interesting because just the other day, I'm trying to find a book my granddaughter, who's a math major, will read, and I thought maybe she'll read Damon Runyon stories, because I always thought they were very funny. And yeah. then, lo and behold, I see your CV, and you've got a Damon Runyon Foundation. Yeah. I arrived Grant. with it and, and made the local newspaper. Wow. With the, Amazing. They sent somebody and presented it. and That was the old days when it was easy. But then within a few years, you had NIH and NSF money too, Yeah, which was amazing. Three-grant guy. 
well, and then later in, later in life, I had a lot of Sandoz, C, uh, oh, yeah. Cibagagi, uh Yeah, you went over there and worked, didn't yes, you? With yeah. the antibiotic that kills selectively? Well, I worked with, with actually, I worked, that was, that was way at the end of my career. But, okay, uh, oh, and, so you and, went several uh, times. I, I went, to, went there to a meeting first. They had a mm -hmm. meeting in, in Switzerland and I met one of their people, a uh, man named Gysi, and uh, decided to go back there on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you left Brown for? I left Brown and went to Berkeley as a visiting professor. Mm -hmm. uh, and Was that it, common for Berkeley to hire people from? It was common for Berkeley to hire people with a degree from Berkeley. It was. <laughs> and as it is in a lot of major universities, it, I was there really just to, Emerson was on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. uh, they had several candidates. Bob Embry was one, I, I was one. I don't know who the others uh, were. Uh, anyway, I was asked to stay and I really would, mm -hmm. that's when I would like to have gone to Santa Barbara, but once Santa Barbara found Berkeley was considering me, they, they, cut they, you they, off. they, they can't even touch you. And, and uh. so. Berkeley offered me the position, and I stayed there five years, I guess yeah. it was. It, and I have been in the house you owned in Berkeley, but not when you lived there. It was when Russell... Uh, Mal, not Russell Malmberg, but Russell, 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 whatever Russell. his name was. He bought the Stevens. house. Stevens. Stevenson. Stevenson. No, Something. Russell. But anyway, Russell bought that house, and I just thought it was wonderful. So you must be a kind of fan of modern architecture, because I was in your house in Athens, Georgia, and it was kind of the same. Very beautiful houses. Well, I probably am more colonial than really, than, than, but but actually, I, I like I like modern. Yeah. Uh, most well. people don't like the new entrance that they've just made here. It's a little sterile, <laughs> but it it's it's modern, and and my kids come and they think it's beautiful. Uh, my wife thinks it's awful, but anyway. well, okay. But I just we've, thought we've, yeah, you were a fan can, of contemporary architecture, but maybe not. So I, then, I sort of like it, too, if okay. it's well done. So what made you leave Berkeley? I, it's a story I, I like to tell and I don't like to tell. I mean, I, I left really because I was in Ralph Emerson's box. Ralph was my very best friend. I mean, I, as you know, I did a book in his honor and so yeah. on. But I was in his box. And particularly, even though he was in the National Academy and so on, when I had seven students and postdoctorals and he had two, it was really, mm. and, and I was getting it, I got invited to the Spore thing, that the first one they had, yeah. I think, in England. Uh, and he, he made comments about the lady who was in charge of mycology there, derogatory comments to all the graduate students. And I thought, at some point, I thought, I have. I, you this get is not, out. I just have to leave, and and I had several possibilities. I could have gone to Tennessee with as a liaison between the Oak Ridge and and the university. I mm -hmm. I chose Georgia. I lost fifty two pounds moving to the south, and 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 that didn't happen. Yet I, I, it turned out it was a very good choice, and I I thought that was the end of my career in mycology. It wasn't. I even had John Taylor as a postdoc. So it, yeah, John had asked me to ask you, uh, how did you build up a, a program with so many mycologists in the botany department? Well, you know, there, there, there were a few other mycologists there. There was, was Hanlon, when Luttrell, you started, yeah, and, and so on. So there was, there was a, a real basis of people coming and, and, and Dick Hanlon and I, sort of crossed over. I mean, I would teach the course mm -hmm. in the beginning of my college one year, he would teach the other. Most of my students came there as graduate students. Uh, I had had I had very You mean few, the ones from Berkeley? Well I I took seven people I think when I left Berkeley mm -hmm. or something like that. But uh, uh, some of them were very far along in their degrees. But then Postdoctorals like Brent Heath. Uh, oh, I didn't remember Brent. Uh, Brent was a postdoctoral. Uh, so was uh, John Taylor, of course. Yeah. Uh, 
many, I had a bunch of them. You've got the list somewhere. Yeah. You'll have yeah. to look at it when you I'll get home. Send it to you. Okay, so that. Harvey Hoke was a yeah. postdoc. Okay, so talking about Brent reminds me about asking you how you came to electron microscopy because it was a very new field then, wasn't it? Yeah, just at, at Brown, I had a good friend who was in the zoology department and he was the head of the EM laboratory and I, I spent some time with him. By the time I got to Berkeley, I don't know, I don't know, I, I, all I know is that that's about what, that's what I did. That's I was, I had done really... a lot of, of marine mycology mm -hmm. while, when I was at uh, Brown because there was a beautiful ocean right there and, uh, but, and I don't know how, I really didn't know much of the technique of, of except looking through the, through the. You mean you had someone to fix your I, material? I hired somebody who knew how to, how to prepare material mm -hmm. and, and we did have to do some variation because the, the fungi we were working with were very sensitive to some of these things, but. Uh, so what, what about, um, what kind of microscope did you have? Oh. Well, we had, it a had a Siemens in the thing, mm -hmm. and, and uh, interestingly, NIH gave me a, a Zeiss microscope, and when I decided to leave, Berkeley said they're going to keep it, and NIH told them that if they did keep it, they would give me the money that somebody at Berkeley would get so I could buy <laughs> another one. They threatened so them. So quickly, it, it moved to Georgia, okay. and unfortunately, it still stayed in my name, so it, it, when we sold it to Yale, uh, I had fourteen thousand dollars or something like that that I had to get rid of, and I gave it to the university because it oh. it really l shouldn't have been in my name. It, yeah, uh, yeah. So now I'm a member of the President's Club for life at the <laughs> University of Georgia. Okay. Now the other thing I'm curious about, and I, I know Mark Cabetta is too, is about the symposium you had to honor Ralph Emerson. And Ralph was very ill at the time. Yes. And so sadly, he couldn't get to the workshop. It was a workshop, not a symposium. It was mostly a workshop, about mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. I attended. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Well, a lot of it was due to Larry Goroloff, and you probably don't know I'm much a, about I've Larry. Met him, Larry but was, I... a, was one of the probably most brilliant students I had. But he's, he's now back in. Pennsylvania, I think, and is doing well in a smaller mm -hmm. school and has had a very good career, I think. Good. Yeah, everything, you know, just, you know, the, the zoosporangia popped and we yeah. saw zoospores swimming around. It, it, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And, that, and the uni actually the university paid, Georgia paid for me to go and present the book to Ralph. It, actually, oh. it, was, it was in honor of Ralph and Ed Cantino, who mm -hmm. had also, I was either had died by then or I think he had. was certainly. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and one of the things, uh, the the book that accompanied it was just wonderful because it told you how to grow all these things and gave you the date, the day on which you should start the cultures and all, and how many hours and it was it was really something. Yeah. Were you the one who told me there was somebody I could give that book to, uh, someone in Martha's place? <clears throat> well, I don't know that I would give it away because, well, it was reprinted, right? It was revised. I, no, it, it, it never was revised. No, it, but it sits in my closet. And okay, I, well, let me tell you what. I'd two like to get it ago, to somebody who might work me, with these Let me tell I, you, two days ago, I looked on Amazon and there is one copy available. Guess what it's selling for? Don't have any idea. More than $8,500. <laughs> Are you kidding? No. Well, I'm not going to buy it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I mean, that anyone I don't want to put, but... I, would, I would rather give mine to somebody who, I don't think it's... Well, I think we can take care of it at the MSA auction. It would be someone who would really that, use that's it. That's a good thing, yeah. And yeah. I buy them whenever I see them and then give them away. But uh, you started a printing company for mycological books. Uh, I wouldn't say I started a printing company. It was a very well-established printing company. Southeastern printing? Southeastern Publishing. And they did okay. a lot of things. Uh, and I don't know how they got me involved with some other things. But anyway, when I did the two, the two books, the first the one. I see. Well, the three oh. books, yeah, actually. There were two on zoosporic fungi and okay. one on the zygomycetes that I edited. But... Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. That, that Zygomites Eat book, maybe you don't appreciate it working with Kittreds, but there was not much on Zygomites yeah. Eats in English. And so well, that, it was a good company to work with. Yeah. And, it, it, uh, and, and I think that was, I mean, that kind of thing was the way Emerson taught people mm -hmm. to handle fungi, to make them, make them do things that students could enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, and they were collections of things they, the, of things that yeah. weren't collected, yeah. <laughs> or in collections. I mean, book collections. Not uh, you didn't have to look up individual papers anymore. So I want to ask you about a man called El Ani. <clears throat> El Ani. A L hyphen A N I. He was at Berkeley. Was he before you? You don't remember don't, the name. The, the name doesn't. Okay. I, um, I think he was from Pakistan. But anyway, I was just curious about him. He's someone I've known of, but never... Did he work on fungi? Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I think he ended up doing medical mycology, maybe for the state of New York or something. No. So I was looking up all the people there uh, that I'd run into, and, and some of them were much earlier than you, people like uh, Calvin McMillan, who was at, South, at Texas when I was there. Well, Calvin was... Uh, ahead of you well, several he years. Was, the, was he at the University of Nebraska? Or, I had no, him somewhere as he, a teacher. Well, he may have still been teaching. He was, he finished at, uh, he finished at Berkeley in 52. So I don't know if he would have stayed on and taught some okay, labs or something. Okay, I graduated from University of Maine 53. He, he, he must, I think he must, I think he was at Nebraska. Okay. No, but there was, a, there was a taxonomist, he was Rich, an ecologist. Rich, and, and, yeah, and, and Richie Bell was there, Paul Richie Silver. Bell, of course, came here inside of the botanical yeah. garden. At, yeah. Uh, and uh, is he living? Uh, probably not. Uh, they were all uh, Berkeley people before you. Uh, let's see, Carl Richie Bell Quist. was there on the sabbatical while I was on the faculty. Okay. At, uh, Carl Quist was there. All sorts of really well-known yeah, people. Well, Stone. Yeah, I know Carl Quist also. Um, and one of my favorite teachers of all time taught me electron microscopy methods. Well, it was cytology, really. Uh, Howard Arnott. Did you know Howard? He worked with Howard Yucca. very well. He and I were. He was a graduate student when I was mm -hmm. there. And yeah. Was he at Texas when you? Yep, he yep. was, and and went on to Tampa, and then he ended up at Texas. Um, Dallas, Fort Worth area. But anyway, he was one of the best teachers I've ever had. Mm, that's interesting. <clears throat> he, he made you show him, <laughs> you know, that kind of teacher. I don't Good. believe you, show me. <laughs> and then uh, Jerry Aronson, who ended up at yep. uh, Arizona, right? Arizona, yeah. Uh, in fact, Arizona State, I think. Yeah, uh, you're right, you're right. That's Arizona where State. Robbie Robinson is mm -hmm. now. And, uh, yeah. So uh, who did Jerry work with? Did he work with him? Jerry so? worked, I think, with Macklis. Now, okay. He worked for me for some time while I was at Berkeley, but he, not mm -hmm. as a postdoc. But I think he, was, he didn't have a position at the time, but uh, uh, or, or came back there. As, I don't know. I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't remember the details. Okay. And then in 59, it's Mel Fuller and Keith Harrison, Otto Solbrig. And what's unusual in your class, there are two other people. And one of them we've mentioned was Isabel Tavares mm -hmm. and Jane Ulrich. Jane? Ulrich. That was her married oh. name, so I, I don't oh, okay. remember the uh, maiden name. But what's unusual about that is there were actually two out of five were women. <laughs> well, you know, there, there were, there were, there was Janet Stein, I had a... a later, later. Yeah, well, even in, in 63, though, I don't think women were even equal in 63, and <laughs> they're not today, probably, in many people's mind, but it's getting better. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, there was, there was Janet Stein, I had Barbara, whatever her name was, that, who's listed on that thing, at, as a postdoc, who was on the faculty later at... Uh, University in, in British Columbia. Or at, oh uh, yeah, that's where Janet Stein was too, wasn't she? Yeah, you? Janet was yeah. At there, uh, and uh, she, Janet wasn't a student of mine. She no, was in no. uh, algae, she, I think. Okay, so, um, and then 61, Whistler graduated, Howard. 
How had, yeah, he finished so he, a couple of years after yeah. I did. So he had been in the Army? He was the in the Air Force. Air he came Force. back about the, the, toward the middle of the end, while I was still working for Emerson. Okay. Uh, in, in his yeah. laboratory. I mean, the he, smart he, he one. Ma maintaining the collection of cultures then, because we didn't have a person that... Uh, okay, well, was he on the GI Bill, do you know? Probably, I don't... Because, I don't really um, know. Uh, about Tennessee... Uh, he, sh he should have been. Ron, Ron... Uh, yes, I know who you're Ron talking about, but I... Peterson. Yeah. Ron Peterson has been very interested in all of the, the uh, mycologists who came back on the GI Bill. Uh, Emery Simmons was one, yeah. Bob Gilbertson. Is Emery uh, still living, do you know? No, or, Emery you know? died about five years ago. He and I did the, sec the first, the second international conference. Yeah, and that was so another that, thing yeah. I wanted to ask you about. Um, there's been, for the last two years, a search to see if the International Mycological Association ever had uh, had filed papers with the government or anything, uh, so that they were official. In this country? Yeah, or anywhere. And I don't I, believe Emory and I did. No, you did it for for the Congress in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember Emory wrote about that. He's written a history of the early days of the uh, IMA that's Well, online. have you got that on your computer? Yeah, you want send that? that? I would like to I'll see it, it because I, I enjoyed working with Emery a yeah. lot. And yeah, I, Emery became a good friend of mine. In, yeah. in fact, I went and kind of closed down his lab uh, yeah. well, after we were, he died. After that, we were good friends for the rest mm -hmm. of my career and, and yeah. probably uh, and, uh, we both got a beautiful bottle of vodka from Russia when <laughs> we did that Congress. That one, they let one person come to the International Mycology Congress from Russia, and, and she brought two bottles of vodka, and <laughs> I don't know. And you got one. We got one of them, and, but she did it in secret. She wasn't, didn't want to have it identified in any way, but yeah. I think I can tell it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so then I was going to ask about, um, was Jimmy Clark in school or did, uh, did Jimmy, was, he was there after you probably. I think after, probably, was he mycology? Mm -hmm. He might have been working yeah, with. Yeah, he worked, worked with uh, Ray O'Neill Collins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I think he replaced me. Collins yeah, he, did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Ellix was his major professor, and I'd see Colin's picture on the yeah. wall. Dr. Ellix had all the pictures on the wall, and he told Ray that he would probably never get a really good job because of his race, and here he ends yeah. up at Berkeley better than any of the rest of us, so that was really, really nice. Well, that was good. I did one good thing by getting out of there. Yeah, you, got, you, you made place for, for Ray. Unfortunately, he died very early. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, too. yeah. But so, you know, when they hired John, they, they interviewed four people. Two of them were my postdoctorals, and one of them was Larry Goroloff, and they hired John, so it, I, I felt pretty good. that I don't know who yeah. the fourth one was, but... Wasn't yours. And wasn't mine. <clears throat> yeah, it was funny. The other day I was looking for John, well, when they had the retirement party for John at the, uh, in his department. I was looking to see if I could find that original job ad because they wanted someone who could do everything. And so this person was to be expected to do the culture collection, uh, have graduate students, teach undergraduates, get grant money, and on and on and on. I think there were even some arboretum duties. And so I thought, who in the world will fill that position? And John got it, and he's done very, very well. I think John had the outlook that went for mycology. I mean, even though he just wrote me recently, or told me recently that the paper he did with me was one of the most cited papers he'd ever had. So anyway, I think, oh, Frank Gleason, did he work with you? Frank Gleason did not work with me, but be we've become fairly good friends in, in okay. later life. No, I, Frank, Frank was, was, is, and was a very good mycologist. Don't, I mean, he comes to visit mm -hmm. me every year. Oh, that's nice. So then the other person who is one of the first mycologists I ever met at a meeting was Bertie Held. A.A. A. Held. Bertie was a student of Emerson. Okay. 
went to some place in New York to college. Yeah, it was like Hunter College Hunter or College, one I of think those. That, uh, it, uh, and I don't know what happened to Berkeley, Bertie much after that. He went into other areas, I think, mm -hmm. and, uh, because it, he didn't continue with those work things. Well, I, I remember him playing the piano, I think. Really? I never I, knew I that. I think he no. was born in... in um, Germany? Or? Israel. Israel. Well, didn't. it was Palestine, actually. I think when he was born, I'm I'm not sure. Or maybe it was his mother, but he had one of the neatest uh, titles for paper I, I've ever known. I always remembered. I had to write it down, but it's something about naked endoparasitic fungi which dress up like their host, and so it's about Roselle. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he was an Emerson student, and he was very, yeah. very capable. It, yeah. it, uh, but it, he apparently must have gone into something else because there's not mm. much, unless you know I a lot. I never that saw I him at another meeting after yeah. that. So that was years ago. Well, I would, I would, I would tell them they better get some chemistry and and things like that, and I, and I would, I, I would tell them. To look at the zoosporic fungi because nobody else is these days. That uh, when Martha Powell and Joyce Longor are gone, and, and these fungi have been forgotten except for one that suddenly became a parasite because it lived on the skin of animals that breathe through their skin. But uh, uh, and and I, I I I guess I would say to high school students isolate fungi. Bait them with hemp seed, or if you can't get hemp seed anymore, bait, find something else to bait them with. But, but I, I, I think just seeing fungi do what they do, and particularly when they swim around, that they're even, to me, more exciting. exciting. But, uh, uh, but even so, I mean, mushrooms and, and so on, just, just I, th I think too frequently we try to teach, I, molecular biology is very, very important. I'm not doing that or DNA for relationships and so on has told us a lot about the fungi that we didn't know but the students in high school ought to be looking at organisms and 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 so on and and I've I've worked with several of them when I was after I retired in in a high school in Maine but uh, the uh, that's that's my feeling that, yeah. that looking at living organisms I couldn't get that to happen in my department at LSU. They have to start out with all this chemistry, yeah, which well, this you need is what, to pick this, up. You this need is what, it, and, but, and that's why it, it, yeah. it bothers me that, that in today's world, there isn't anybody who knows some of these things. And mm -hmm. George Longcore, who's at Maine, who took over the frog thing, has, has gotten international yeah. recognition because she was with Sparrow earlier and knew how to isolate these things. And and has every paper mm -hmm. that you see is I mean she's she's acknowledged on That's it right. and uh, it it and and people like Martha Powell I don't know who's out there that that has this there may be some I'm, I'm Martha had a student who's quite um, I don't what is he near retirement actually yeah well I mean uh, and, and I mean not, David McLaughlin was a student of mine and he he. He really He's, was a fan of Wally Snell, but he, Wally was retired, mm -hmm. and, and David, I sent him off to, to McGill to work with Charlie Wilson, and he came back to Berkeley to work with me. But Yeah, uh, and, that's and, interesting. Uh, yeah, and well, then, I sent uh, him to Michigan to learn something, because I, I don't know yeah, mushrooms other than the yeah. ones I won't eat. Well, he's done quite well. And when Brent Heath left, it, he went to one university and his wife went to the University of Toronto, so it, uh, Yeah, he was nearby though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Carleton. Car not Carleton. No, um, no, it's I but it's right it's there. It's become York, a very York. York. York, York University, University, right. Yeah. Yeah, and now he's off doing something called coursing, I think, where you ride big horses and go across the country. Well they they, they had a house in British Columbia. Yeah, that's where they went. And I, I don't know if they went there to live. David McLaughlin had a house in, in that he built, uh, he and Esther built on the coast of California, but they're about to sell it, the, I, I think, know, you keep up with everything. They, well, all their kids are in Florida, and uh -huh. so they, they, Minnesota gets kind of cold in the winter. They bought a place there yeah, in uh, Carl Gables, Gables, I think, yeah. 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 So, well, when I retired, I gave a lot of books 
most of my books, but I, I, I dictated then that they go to the what was then the Fuller Fund that, fund that I turned into the Emerson, Whist, Emerson Fuller Whistler Fund. Oh. Well, there wasn't anything in the honor of Emerson, and so I, we're, we're a trio as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. to, of similar thinking. It, well, uh, that was good thinking. And, and anyway, and, and <clears throat> uh, John Taylor got geared up to make it even bigger so because there was enough money. So initially he wanted me to donate another 1500 but he ended up that we both gave another 500 I think. Oh. So, But it's, it's, it's got the fund up where they society yeah. wanted it to, yeah. except they put mine into some other totally different thing about the city of my seats or something, and, and I finally got them to move it to the proper okay. place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm glad they started naming these funds. It used to be, uh, there was supposed to be a biography of each person. Well, it was, I don't even know who, some of my students. students must have done it, but uh, anyway. Yeah, no, that's what was done. Uh, but I was going to say, we, we used to get a biography of the person to give to the student who won it each year. Yeah, well, and, no. And Howard's does a lot. Howard's of that too. is really good. I like it. And uh, there's a picture of him fishing, as I remember. Uh, trout fishing? Did he trout well, fish? I, I don't know. I have a lot, number of pictures of yeah. Howard. With, but the one that was published. I, we used I, to go out collecting in mm. the swamps or the, of California or something, and, and Howard would be right in there in his boots. Mm.